Yo, what is going on Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, Bat Fantasy Addict, and today we are continuing our mock draft series with 12 team PPR mock drafts. We are now about to be two thirds done with this series. We are drafting from the eighth overall pick. Today, we've done the first through the seventh pick, so we're about to be two thirds done with this, and we'll probably do even more 12 team PPR mock drafts even after we do all 12 positions. So we'll see what happens there. As long as I have enough time, I'm gonna bring you guys the most content I possibly can. But for now, let's just get right into the mock draft. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it and start immediately. So first off, Christian McCaffrey, then Saquon, Zeke, Michael Thomas, Devontae Adams goes quite early, Dalvin Cook, and Joe Mixon. So by the way, guys, this is on Sleeper app. So it's... They don't always have the best ADPs, I find. Like right now, Alvin Kamara is a quite a bit lower, as you can see, he's right here. It's some weird glitch, so just because of that, I am not going to draft him here because the ADPs clearly got a little mixed up and you know, I don't wanna like take advantage of the weird system going on right now. Normally, it's fine, so sleeper up. I'll leave a link in the description below if you'd like to check them out. I'm not sponsored, I just like drafting on here because I think it is the best place to do it. But yeah, normally Kamara isn't going to be ranked 13th on ADP. It's just a very weird system. Sometimes weird stuff like that happens. But yeah, so for our pick, we have Derrick Henry is the main guy here. I'm going to assume Kamara already went, and Derrick Henry's the guy here. He is a workhorse, even in PPR scoring. I think he is a phenomenal pick. He is gonna get he is gonna get over 300 total touches, and his receiving upside is definitely capped. But I do think that he could get more targets this season than last season, and I think that he is just an incredible running back, and he is gonna score a lot, and he's just a beast. You know, look at him. He's six three, two fifty. No one can stop him. We're taking Derrick Henry, and I'm happy to have him on on my team. Then Tyreek Hill. Miles Sanders, Kenyon Drake, Josh Jacobs, Nick Chubb, Aaron Jones, Alvin Kamara, and Austin Eckler. So at first glance, it looks like CEH is the only running back remaining who I really, really like. I'm just looking at the other running backs to make sure that there was no weird glitches going on. And no, no weird glitches there. So at wide receiver, we have Julio, we have Hopkins, and we have Godwin. I have Godwin ahead of Julio and Hopkins. Hopkins is on a new team. And Julio was almost outscored in points per game by Calvin Ridley through week 14. And I say through week 14 because week 15, 16, and 17, Ridley was out and Julio went off. So I'm excluding those weeks because they were outliers. Julio is going to get outscored this season by Calvin Ridley. I'm calling it right there. And Hopkins is on a new team. So I have Godwin ahead of those two players. So I guess it's between CEH and Chris Godwin for me, but I should be getting a guy like Le'Veon Bell or Chris Carson with my third round pick. So for this pick, I'm going to go with the receiver and I'm going to go with Godwin. A lot of people are going to think it's a reach, but I do have him as my fourth overall receiver behind Michael Thomas, Devontae Adams, and Tyree Kill. Then Julio and Hopkins go back to back, followed by Lamar Jackson, CEH, Todd Gurley, Travis Kelsey, David Johnson, Kenny Galladay, Mahomes, Mike Evans, Adam Thielen, Leonard Fournette, George Kittle, and Allen Robinson. So running back, like I said, Le'Veon Bell, Chris Carson, both there. You know, you can go either way here. I wouldn't fault you at all if you went with Le'Veon Bell. And even if you went with James Conner, I think it's very risky, but I do think that there is some potential there. So if you want to go with him and be risky, I do think that's okay. Don't go Melvin Gordon. You are simply name branding him. Honestly, the only good side of Melvin Gordon is that he has the name Melvin Gordon. We know him to be an elite running back, but he's not going to be one of them this season. He is in a crowded backfield. If you want to go James Conner, that's okay. But for me, it's between Le'Veon Bell, James, excuse me, Le'Veon Bell and Chris Carson. And if you watch my videos, you know I love Chris Carson. He's been a staple on my team. I get him pretty much every draft pick, or excuse me, every league in every draft. So I'm going Chris Carson. I always get him and it's because I think he's a phenomenal third round pick. Then James Conner goes followed by Amari Cooper, OBJ, Melvin Gordon, Juju, DJ Moore, 
Mark Andrews, and Jonathan Taylor. Now, Le'Veon Bell is available. Maybe I'll go with him there. Cooper Cup and Ridley are also there. You know, I would go Le'Veon Bell, but I've done a lot of these... Well, it wouldn't really be a wide receiver zero strategy, I guess, because I went with Chris Godwin. So, you know what? Hmm. Let's see. Cooper Cup, Ridley. I would take Ridley here. No. I think I would normally. Yeah, okay. In a real draft, I would go Ridley here, just because I like Henry and Godwin. Excuse me, Ridley and Carson a lot. But... I haven't really gotten both Carson and Bell in the same mock draft, even though I like both of them. And I think this is a great opportunity to experiment and see how I feel if I get both of these guys who I normally debate between when I'm in the third round and choosing between them. So this time we're going to see what happens when we get both of them and we'll see if it was a good pick or if I should have taken Ridley or Cooper Cup with our fourth round pick. Then we see four wide receivers go back to back, Ridley, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup and Metcalf, then Raheem Mostert, Mark Ingram, A.J. Brown, Devin Singletary, David Montgomery, T.Y. Hilton, Keenan Allen, McLaurin, Cortland Sutton, and Zach Ertz. So if you guys didn't know, basically Raheem Mostert is requesting a trade, and if you didn't see my previous video on this trade, definitely go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. I cover the real-life impact and the fantasy impact for him and everyone else on the 49ers and what I think is actually going to happen. So I cover a lot there. I definitely encourage you to watch that video. But back to the draft, we have Shark available. And I really like Shark. I think Lockett is a good pick as well. But I think Shark is definitely the guy here. He was very, very good last season. And now Gardner Minshew has one season under his belt, and I think it should be an improved offense, I'm hoping at least. And Shark is a very good player. He's a third-year receiver, which is what we like to target because third-year wide receivers, historically, are when they have the greatest chance of breaking out. So if you look at the running back value, Kareem Hunt, Akers, Geis, Dobbins, like all of them, but one of them will be available with my next pick. At tight end, Waller is not worth it quite yet, and Kyler Dak not taking them this early. So for me, it's definitely Chark. I think this is a very, very good pick, and I would be hesitant to take anyone else, to be quite honest. Then Hunt goes, followed by Cam Akers, Dak Prescott, Tyler Lockett, Damian Williams, Waller, Kyler, and Gronk. Way too early on Gronk, guys. You guys have to settle down on him. So, Geis and Dobbins, you can go either way here. But just looking at our roster, you know, we have Derrick Henry, Chris Carson, and Le'Veon Bell. Those are three really, really good running backs. I don't need to be safe with J.K. Dobbins or James White or Ronald Jones. I don't need that. You know, I don't need a safe guy who can be my flex. I just need a riskier player who could outperform Le'Veon Bell and or Chris Carson. Because to be honest, if Darius Sky stays on the field, I really think that he could outperform Bell or Carson and be my flex for many weeks. Yes, he could get injured, but I don't really see the upside in Dobbins with the exception of Mark Ingram going down, but I don't want to rely on Mark Ingram going down. I'd rather rely on Darius Geis staying up, so we're going to go with Geis with this pick. If you want to go with Dobbins or Ronald Jones, you can do that, but I just think it's much of a smarter play to go with Darius Geis given the team that we have constructed. Russell Wilson goes after our pick, followed by DeAndre Swift. Brandon Cook, Stephon Diggs, Evan Ingram, Marquise Brown, Devontae Parker, Deshaun Watson, A.J. Brown, Drew Brees, J.K. Dobbins, Ronald Jones, Tom Brady, and Tariq Cohen. So at running back, the first guy who catches my eye is James White. I do like him. I think he is a safe pick, but I think we could take a receiver here or possibly a tight end, but we would wait until next round if we're even going to consider taking a tight end. So Landry, Gallup, I think Gallup is definitely the play here. He is a little riskier, but he also has a decent floor. We saw him be a wide receiver one last season with just 115 targets. People are worried about CeeDee Lamb, but they forget that Randall Cobb and Jason Witten both had exactly 83 targets each last season, and they're both gone. That's 166 vacated targets right there. The Cowboys have the second most vacated targets behind Atlanta, I believe. 
second most vacated targets in the entire NFL going into the season, there's enough room for CeeDee Lamb. He's not going to take that 160, 170, 180 vacated targets from the entire team. You know, he's going to get maybe 90 targets. There's still room for CeeDee Lamb, excuse me, still room for Michael Gallup, and I think Michael Gallup is safe but has a lot of potential, especially if Amari Cooper goes down. So we're going to take him as our wide receiver three. Edelman goes, followed by Landry, James White, Jordan Howard, Keyshawn Vaughn, Marlon Mack, Debo Samuel, Matt Ryan. And it's our pick again. I could go Boyd, but, you know, I want to try going with the tight end. I love Tyler Higby. He's a guy who I absolutely loved. But the issue is he's been going up a lot in his ADP, especially on Sleeper. I really, really liked him, and I was on board with him before most people were. I kept talking about him, and I loved him. He was going in the 11th round at one point. Now he's going in the 8th, 9th round, but I still like him there. It's just that a lot of times there's value elsewhere, and when you fade the wide receiver position early on, you have to take wide receivers in the middle and late rounds, which has caused me to not be drafting Higby recently. But now I do feel confident with my three wide receivers, so I'm going to take Higby here. You could go Hayden Hurst, but honestly... We don't even know how good he is. We know that Tyler Higby's good and capable in this offense. We saw him at the end of last season balling out, and I think he is going to do phenomenal in this offense, so we'll take Tyler Higby there. Sony Michelle goes right after our Tyler Higby pick, followed by Tyler Boyd, Tevin Coleman, Hayden Hurst, Matt Breida, Alexander Madison, Deontay Johnson, Marvin Jones, Emmanuel Sanders, Will Fuller, A.A. Ron, Rod Gers, Hunter Henry, Darius Slayton, and Philip Lindsay. Our pick, once again, let's take a quick look at quarterback. And there's a few guys here who I like. Allen, Wentz, and Stafford. And yeah, that's about it. So maybe with our next pick, we will take one of them. Quick look at wide receiver. CeeDee Lamb is the guy who I like here. Running back, Zach Moss, Gibson, Latavius Murray are the guys who I like. And tight end, no one there really. So... You know, there's not really a ton of value that I'm seeing right here. Gibson, Moss are both decent picks, but I'm a fan of them later. Looking down, there's not many other players who I like. Latavius Murray's the only guy who I really like there, except CeeDee Lamb also is a decent pick, and I think that pairing him with Michael Gallup could be a good move because if one of them goes down, then the other one has a lot more value, so I'm kind of playing it safe almost because if Gallup or CeeDee Lamb goes down then I have the other one who will get an increased target share for the weeks that the other player is out so I'm gonna go with CeeDee Lamb here he has value on his own I can start Gallup and CeeDee Lamb and be fine but if one of them goes down the other one is gonna have a much bigger role in that offense when in those weeks that the other player is out so we'll take CeeDee Lamb right here McCall Hardman goes, followed by Jerry Judy, Josh Allen, San Fran defense, Carson Wentz, Zach Moss, Carrion Johnson, and Latavius Murray. So now there is one quarterback left who I, I won't say who I like because Daniel Jones and Big Ben are both okay too, and I like them as well, but Stafford is in a tier significantly higher than the other two, mainly because we've seen Stafford do it year in and year out, including last season. We didn't see that out of Big Ben, and Daniel Jones was a rookie, and Saquon Barkley is the head of this team. Stafford, we know he can throw, and the offense revolves around him. We saw him go lights out last season until he got injured, and most people are saying his injury isn't one that really affects quarterbacks that much, so I'm not too concerned about that injury. And Matt Stafford loves to pass the ball. He's always been great in fantasy. So we'll take him with this pick, and I'm very happy with it. New England defense goes, followed by Henry Ruggs, Buffalo defense, Jared Cook, Antonio Gibson, Baltimore defense, Jamison Crowder, Daniel Jones, Big Ben, Pollard, Christian Kirk, Deshaun Jackson, Henderson, and Noah Fant. A lot of defense is going early. We have the 49ers in the ninth round and New England, Buffalo and Baltimore in the 10th round. Don't do it, guys. It is way too early for a defense. So to look over our roster real quick, we have two starting running backs, Henry and Carson, as well as a running back in our flex, Le'Veon Bell, and then Darius Guy. So that's four four running backs who I really like, Godwin and Shark as our starting wide receivers, and then Gallup and Lamb as 
our bench wide receivers. So I think I could use one more wide receiver. And I think Rieger could be that guy. And Nikhil Harry later on could be that guy. Tight end, not anyone who I love. And running back, Duke Johnson is not a bad play at all. Because if David Johnson goes down, Duke Johnson is very valuable. You know, if David Johnson were to go down in the offseason and the Texans don't bring anyone in, Duke Johnson's probably a fifth round pick, I would say. Now, obviously, I don't think David Johnson's going to go down during the offseason, but if he goes down in week three, four, then Duke Johnson is basically a fifth round pick. You know, he's as valuable as a fifth round pick. And I don't know if David Johnson will go down. You know, I'm not predicting it to happen, but there is a chance, especially considering that he has dealt with injuries in the past. So I think Duke Johnson is a good pick. And Rieger probably won't be available next pick, but Pittman could definitely be available. And worst comes to worst, I take Nikhil Harry, who I absolutely love. So we'll go with Duke Johnson here, because if I go with Rieger, Duke Johnson probably won't be there with my next pick. Then Boston Scott goes, followed by Pittsburgh defense, Chase Edmonds, Cam Newton, Preston Williams, Justin Jefferson, Justin Jackson, and Anthony Miller. So... Rieger is actually available, so I'm very, very glad about that. It seems like whenever I say someone's going to be available, they're not available. But when I say someone's not going to be available, they are available. So Sleeper's just messing with me at this point. Quick look at quarterback. Yeah, no need there. The guys who I like are gone, and we already got our starting quarterback. So we don't need to worry about that there. We're going to go with Rieger. I love him. He could be the wide receiver one in this offense. I don't think it'll happen, but if Alshon Jeffrey were to go down, Rieger has a big role here. And regardless, you know, we don't know if Rieger is going to do well in the NFL, but the opportunity is definitely there. It comes down to his talent, and I think he does have the talent, but there's no safe players in this range, but Rieger is about as safe as they come, who has tremendous upside as well. Then Pittman goes, followed by Naheem Hines, Baker, Chicago defense, Sterling Shepard, Austin Hooper, Tampa Bay defense, Anthony McFarland, Brandon Ayuk, Joe Burrow, Drew Locke, Harrison Butker, TJ Hawkinson, and John Brown. So we have one bench spot left, and even though I do have Tyler Higby, everyone who watches my videos knows that I like having a bench tight end because I think there's a lot of value. And, you know, even if Tyler Higby has his buy super early, or if, I'm, or if my starting tight end, whoever it is, has a buy that's very early, even after that buy passes, and even if I was guaranteed that Higby doesn't get injured, you know, my bench tight end could still turn out very well and have trade value. And I could trade him for a quarterback or a running back or a wide receiver. But even ignoring trades, Higby has a bye week and he could go down. And for all we know, he could bust. There's always a chance that that kind of stuff happens. So I think that having a backup tight end is definitely worth it because there's value there. You never know what's going to happen with your starting tight end. And injuries happen and you're guaranteed a bye. So there's at least one week where I will have to start my backup tight end. And for me, it's Dallas Goddard. You can go with Jacecki if you want to, but I think Goddard's just a little safer. Mike Jacecki, we haven't seen him put it all together. Goddard, we have. We just haven't seen him get a ton of opportunity, but he has still produced about 10 points per game, even without a starting role. But if Zach Ertz were to go down, Dallas Goddard is probably a top three tight end, so I love Dallas Goddard here. Then Tannehill goes, followed by Justin Tucker, Brashad Perriman. Mike Jacecki goes soon after Dallas Goddard. Greg Zerline, LA Chargers defense, Phillip Rivers, and Minnesota Vikings defense. So it's our pick, and we're going to take a defense here. Seattle, New Orleans, Tennessee, all decent picks. I'm going to go with Seattle here. They're a slow-paced offense, relatively, and a solid defense. And, you know, it, it's pretty hard to predict defenses, but Seattle should be pretty good. So we'll go with them here. Will Lutz goes, followed by Miami defense, Sammy Watkins, Young Hoku, Cincinnati defense goes, that is quite strange. I would not advise doing that. Zane Gonzalez, Armstead, Joshua Kelly, A.J. Dillon, Robbie Gould, Carlos Hyde, Damian Harris, Fairbath, and Nikhil Harry. So it's time for our kicker, and you can go with anyone at kicker. I'm going to go with Jake Elliott because, you know, they're a relatively good offense, but they're not super elite to the point where they're just scoring touchdowns all day. They're good offense. I think they'll be passing a lot for sure. And yeah, I think Jake Elliott is a good kicker. He can kick from long range and this offense should be doing a lot of scoring. Then Dan Bailey goes, followed by T. Higgins, Fairbairn, and Mike Jarwin. Is the Mr. Irrelevant in this draft? 
Quick recap of our team. Matt Stafford at quarterback. I think he's fine. He'll get it done. We got him in the 10th round. People spent six round picks on quarterbacks who are almost as good as Stafford. So I think we definitely took a huge dub there. Then we have Derrick Henry, Chris Carson, and Le'Veon Bell as our running backs in our starting roster. Love that. Think that's great. Especially considering that Chris Godwin is our wide receiver one, who I have right now as a top five wide receiver. Love that. DJ Chark should be a wide receiver too. Love him right there. Tyler Higby has potential to be a top five tight end, so I love him there in the eighth round. Elliott and Seattle Seahawks defense, kicker and defense, they don't really matter. Darius Geis and Duke Johnson, I like on our bench. Obviously, Geis, I feel a lot more hyped about to have on my roster than Duke Johnson, but Duke Johnson could be a league winner if David Johnson goes down. Darius Geis is risky, but if he busts, it's okay. You know, he was a six round pick, not the end of the world. Michael Gallup, C.D. Lamb, kind of a safe play right there, knowing that they're both startable on their own, but if one of them goes down, then the other one has more value. Then Jalen Rieger is pretty risky, but you're never going to find a safe player in the 12th round who also has upside, because Rieger does have wide receiver two upside. And then Goddard, like I said, backup tight end, I think it's important. He's great on his own, but without Zach Ertz, he could be tremendous for sure. And a backup tight end is necessary, and I think Goddard is one of the best ones that you can get. So what do I grade this team? I grade this team in A-. minus. I think that it is one of the better drafts that I've done. I really, really like it. I think the one thing that could have been better is my wide receiver too. If McLaurin fell to me, I think that it would have been a an A team. But Shark is still fine as a wide receiver too. I don't think there's any problems with that there. Going back to our previous pick, Le'Veon Bell. To debate whether or not that was a good pick, I think that if I went with Calvin Ridley, then with my next pick, I would have went with Cam Akers. So it's Le'Veon Bell and Shark, or Calvin Ridley and Cam Akers. And you know what? I think Le'Veon Bell and DJ Shark is better. Yes, I like Ridley a lot more, but I also like Le'Veon Bell a lot more than Akers. Actually, now that now the more that I think about it, you could go either way there. I think it's really, really close. But I still would go with Le'Veon Bell because that running back security that you have, taking three running backs in the first four rounds is very, very good. And I think it's a great strategy. So if you wanted to go Ridley and Akers, that's not bad. But I prefer Le'Veon Bell, DJ Chark. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button because it does help a lot. And what I also want you to do is let me know in the comments below, how do you think I did in this draft? Do you think I accurately graded my draft with an A minus or do you think that I deserve something else? Let me know what you grade my team. Do you give it the same grade, an A minus or do you think it's an A, a B minus, an F, you know? Maybe some people think it's an F. So if you think it's an F, let me know for sure. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button because I put out almost daily content and I don't want you guys to miss out. If you don't follow me on Twitter, definitely go check me out there. Link in the description below. I put out a lot of content there every single day and you don't want to miss out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And once again, I will give you another reminder. Now that this video is about over, check out that Raheem Mostert impact video if you have not already. I cover fantasy impact, real life impact, what I think is going to happen. Do I think he'll get traded? Do I not? Where do I think he's going to go? What do I think is going to happen to the 49ers? I let you know everything there. It's a great video. It's relatively short. So definitely go check that out there. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time. Peace.